Hello and welcome back to Postcards from St. Petersburg. This week we're taking a walk along St. Petersburg's most famous street, Nevsky Prospect, named after Alexander Nevsky. And we're starting here at Nevsky Most or Nevsky Bridge, which is on the easternmost edge of uh, Nevsky Prospect and crosses the Neva. When we get to the westernmost part, we will again cross the, the Neva. There's uh, 20 sites that we're going to look at along this, uh, this most famous street. Uh, it's famous mostly as, as a shopping street, like uh, Oxford Street in London or Nanjing Road in Shanghai. But there will be a lot of monuments. And here's our first one over here. You can see behind me, uh, Alexander Nevsky Lavra. Lavra is a monastery. Um, as we set off, I'm just going to say a few words about Alexander Nevsky. I'm far from the expert on him. Uh, he is a 13th century Russian hero. Uh, he's famous mostly for uh, battling against the Swedes uh, in the West, who were the major enemy to Russia. And also among the Teutonic Knights, there was a bit of a disagreement between the Teutonic Knights and Nevsky about how to deal with the Mongols, the Mongol hordes, Genghis Khan's men because the Teutonic Knights wanted to smash them. And Nevsky uh, believed that uh, the, Russia, the Kievan Rus, as it was at the time, wasn't powerful enough and that this would lead to the destruction of, uh, of Russia. So he negotiated with them. And as a result, he's seen as a great defender of Russia. Uh, Stalin considered him the greatest Russian of all time. Peter the Great clearly had a lot of respect for him because he named a lot after him when he founded his city. And in various recent polls, Alexander Nevsky has been named as the, uh, the greatest Russian of all time. So I definitely have him on a uh, tick list of, uh, of Russians that I would like to study and, and learn more about. So I'm going to come back when we're in front of the monument uh, of Alexander Nevsky at Nevsky Prussia. Oh, in fact, look, no, we're already here, so we, we can see it straight away. If you look behind me there, the horseman. I'll go a little bit further so you can see it more clearly. Uh, you can see Nevsky. Uh, whilst we're getting there, he was also uh, uh, sainted, uh, canonised rather. He was made uh, a saint of the Russian Orthodox Church by Peter. One of the things that uh, Peter the Great did was he changed the Russian Orthodox Church from having a single leader into having a, a synod of which Peter was the was the leader was in overall charge of which uh, I guess similar to what uh, Henry VIII did in Britain really closely linked the state and the church in, in Russia at that time there's been a lot of changes since of course here's uh, Nevsky let's see if we can see him with his uh, spear there upon his horse there's uh, Alexander Nevsky one of the greatest Russians of all time and the man who gave his name to the prospect we're walking along today so I've been walking along this easternmost stretch of Nevsky Prospect, which a lot of people don't consider to be Nevsky Prospect, although it is. That's the, that's the address, uh, because it's not the most famous stretch. But it's full of lots of designer shops. What I've decided to do, though, is to nip into one of these little courtyards of the Prospect. Why have I decided to do this? Because I think the courtyards are a very important part of St. Petersburg. Anybody who's seen the film Banditsky Petersburg, uh, where the, uh, the little larders make a little chase in between the courtyards, would have felt something of the romance of these courtyards. Um, so Petersburg, as I understand, I'm still exploring it, is laced with them all the way around the city. Uh, and it's possible to get from one place to another without ever being on the, the main streets, which obviously is, uh, can be beneficial for criminals that want to avoid the law. Uh, I'm going in this for the first time, so we're just kind of exploring. But um, what we see is that away from the busyness of the street, you've got all these, uh, these back courtyards that connect. Um, and I find them quite fascinating. I might do a video one time trying to get from one side of the city all the way to the other without going on the main street. And it's so quiet. In the, in the main street there, in the Nevsky Prospect, there's cars dashing down. But it's, it's really lovely. But uh, I guess it's, it's the back ends of people's private houses, so I shouldn't 
video for too long. But that's just a, a sneak into some of the, the courtyards, which I'll probably do a more full video on later. Uh, the next site's going to be the, uh, the City Hero Obelisk. So I'll be back there with you in a few moments. Okay, so I'm feeling fairly elegant, having walked past all the Louis Vuitton and uh, Dior shops in this first stretch of the street. Really beautiful architecture. I mean, I can't show it all, but you see in buildings like this going past the lovely, what I believe are neoclassical facades. But we're coming now to the first site along the street, which is the City Hero Obelisk. This was built in 1985, 40 years after what the Russians call the Great Patriotic War, what we call World War II. Uh, and it's, it's chiefly to commemorate the, uh, the siege of Leningrad. I remember as a child reading a, a battle magazine about the siege of Leningrad. Absolutely phenomenal time when uh, during uh, years the whole city was, was under siege and people dug up the paving stones to plant vegetables. Um, Shostakovich was, uh, was here during that time and composed one of his uh, symphonies to commemorate it. Uh, which I highly recommend listening to. Uh, but what we're going to look at now is this, uh, this obelisk to commemorate. If you see the, uh, the obelisk there uh, behind me, or what was in front of me, I'll get along to it and show you. Um, I, I don't have all the, all the factual details here to hand, um, but as I understand it, uh, because of the civilian deaths, more people actually died in the, uh, the Leningrad siege than did uh, during the more famous uh, Stalingrad battle. Uh, not uh, combatants, but uh, civilians starving and dying. But uh, I mention it at length because uh, the siege of Leningrad is a, is a hugely important part of the history of this city. Uh, and I think it, uh, to some extent, has, um, has affected the culture, uh, the, the sense of being uh, a city, a, a closed community. But look, here's the, uh, here's the obelisk. We've got the sun in the wrong direction. In fact, I think I'll continue this video on the other side of it so you see it more clearly. So I think we get a slightly better view of the Hero City Obelisk here, 32 metre statue uh, to commemorate the, uh, the fallen in the siege of Leningrad. And now just look how wide this street is going down here. This is an absolutely stunning part of Nyersky Prospect as we go down towards the Anichka Bridge across the Fontanka River and we'll start to see some of our main sites as we get closer along there. So we're coming up to the Bieleselsky Bieleszierski Palace built in 1747. I, I can see it now, it's got a beautiful neo baroque exterior. Let's take a look at this piece of ours, this is really beautiful. Can you see these uh, Poseidon-like men holding the building up there? We've got more of those to come. Uh, hold you sideways as we go across so you actually see the building stretch out. So here we have more of these. I don't know if it's supposed to be uh, Poseidon, it reminds me of him as we go along the, uh, the palace exterior here. Obviously I, I'm not an expert on all these, uh, these palaces but my idea is simply to show them to you. Hopefully uh, Increase your interest a little bit, and then you can go buy books about it. But we've got the corner being held up here by uh, these same men. And I go to cross straight across the bridge to the Fontanka River, the Amitsko Bridge. You see the rest of the palace down, uh, down the side here. You see the rest of the palace along the side here, and then behind me got these four bronze horsemen, the horse, the power, being controlled by reason. Uh, I think uh, here we see the horse rearing up out of control with the man down by the side. Here on the other side, you can see gradually, can we see him? The, uh, zoom in. The man uh, starting to take control of the horse. And by the time we get to the other side of the bridge, the Anitschka Bridge, you should see the horse fully, uh, the passion fully uh, dominated by the, by the man ready to ride along. I think on this corner we've got the horse, uh, still with two, two uh, feet in the air, 
we're gradually coming under control. And then by the opposite side here, we have the horse fully under control and ready to be driven by the man. And so we cross over Anitchkov Bridge to uh, Anitchkov Palace, which was built for the Tsarina uh, Elizabeth. This is uh, neo-baroque palace here. This is a little more, um, how to say, uh, austere exterior compared to our um, Beseleski, Beseleski, which I don't know how to pronounce, palace on the other side. But that's the uh, Anichkov Palace with the same name as the Anichkov Bridge, where the four bonds man and horse statues were that we just passed. So as we pass now the Anichkov Palace, uh, we're coming to a, a denser area of Nevsky Prospector sites with quite a few sites in close succession. So the first one we're going to see is the Eliseev Emporium, which was a uh, Art Nouveau shopping centre uh, built uh, just over a century ago. But it's quite pretty. You can almost, well, you can see it already there coming up on the, uh, the right hand side, the uh, ornate building with the uh, bits uh, above it down here. So here we get a better view of the uh, Eliseeva Emporium. Really uh, stunning uh, granite building across there. This Ostrovsky Ploshid is really a lovely Ploshid. I just want to point out at the bottom of the Catherine the Great statue, you've got all the men. Uh, that worked uh, to, to help her. So I just popped under a subway to cross the, uh, the road on Nevsky Prospect. And what we're coming to now on my left is the world's first ever shopping mall. Built in the 1750s, this is the Gastini Dvor, which was the world's first ever shopping centre. And on the other side of the street, we've got an elite department store called the Passage which I'm told has a nice restaurant on the top floor. So I go to pop in and see if I can get some Russian blini. Well, unfortunately, the restaurant at Passage here doesn't open till 11 o'clock. And I've come early because Sernyovsky uh, Prospect gets pretty busy, I understand. So I wanted to avoid the crowds this little vlog. But we can see the Gastini Dvor more completely now from the opposite side of the street. As I said, that was the world's first shopping centre. And now we're coming up to the St. Petersburg Duma, the, uh, the council buildings, which were built in uh, 1786. You can see those there, the red uh, tower on the corner, just next to the Gastini Dvor, coming ahead of us on the left. So now as we pass the Duma there on our left, we come towards uh, St. Catherine's Catholic Church. This is the most important Catholic church in St. Petersburg considered the mother of all of the other churches in St. Petersburg, if you can see this on the, uh, the right here. That's a lovely, um, I'm not sure what architectural style it is, but uh, Catholic church there. And now we're coming to two important buildings. On the left we're going to see the Kazan Cathedral, which is the, uh, the Russian Orthodox Church. And on the right we're going to see my personal favourite building, which is Dom Knigi, the, the House of Books, which I like because it's full of Russian easy readers and uh, great books to read. After Hermitage last week, I went across, bought various books from here. So here's the, uh, here's the Kazan Cathedral. It's complex over on this side, massive complex, which at some point we'll go in and have a look around. And my, uh, my favorite coming up here, it's actually also called the Singer Building. It was, uh, it was built by the Singer family, the famous for their sewing machines. It's a kind of showpiece for their customers here in Russia. And I think you can see it's a, it's a stunning building. Let's have a look at it. I think over the door there you can see the sign Dom, Dom Knigi, the House of Books. Maybe just see some of the uh, elegance of it. What a lovely fake gold there. I like it. I mean, I like it for the books that are inside, but I think it's also quite a uh, 
quite a beautiful building there. So now as we come up to the bridge across the river Moika, we're going to see this Stroganov Palace on the left hand side of the street. And yes, the Stroganov family were the ones that uh, created our beloved beef Stroganov dish. And this is their palace here on Nevsky Prospect. Nice, uh, nice pink frontage there. Let's see if we can see the uh, central part of it. And you know, it's similar to when I was in the Hermitage last week. There's many individual beautiful buildings along this street, Nevsky Prospect, and many individual things to see. But the overall, the most important thing is the context. I felt that very strongly in the Hermitage. It's a strange thing to be surrounded by Titians and uh, Da Vinci's and Rembrandt's, but yet be more interested in the actual setting of them and the palatial rooms, but that was the case. This is the River Moika you know, that we're crossing, or the Canal Moika. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the most famous kind of scenes within St. Petersburg. A lot of things are filmed here. And it also features in some of uh, Dostoevsky's works. And the next site that I should be seeing across here, the Cottonwood Palace, has a cafe where Dostoevsky used to drink coffee. So I'm going to see if that one's open. Definitely going to try and pop in there and get some breakfast bleeding. But that's our, that's our Moika river that we're crossing here. And so here is our Cottonwood House. Apparently the last place that uh, Pushkin stopped on his way to the uh, fateful jewel that took his life. He stopped here for a coffee and some biscuits on the way across. And like I say, it was also popular. There's a cafe with Dostoevsky. But sadly, looking at the opening hours, it doesn't open till noon. So our friends Pushkin and Dostoevsky clearly weren't uh, morning birds. So I may end up having to have coffee at McDonald's. Let's see how we get along. Well, we're almost at the end of this introduction to Nevsky Prospect. Uh, it's four and a half kilometers that we've walked now since the Alexander Nevsky Bridge. And we're coming up towards the Admiralty, Admiralty Building and the Alexander Gardens that mark the end of the prospect. But there's one last site I want to point out on the way along. And this is the Wawelberg Bank, um, mostly because of its, uh, the grey granite exterior, which I think uh, creates a certain emotional effect. And you see it on the other side of the road there. You get a little bit closer to it. Um, it's kind of eerie, I think, compared to a lot of these light pastel pink and yellow, and you see behind it the green building there. This has the sense of, for me, of a kind of a, a prison. But uh, it was a bank, so you can speculate on all the metaphors of money as a prison that you like. So that's the Wawelberg Bank, and our last site before we get to the Admiralty at the end of Nevsky Prospect. So we've come to the end of Nevsky Prospect now. Ahead of us, we're going to see the Admiralty, Admiralty buildings which uh, Peter the Great built to celebrate the uh, greatness of the, the Russian Navy. Obviously no Navy compares with the, with the British Navy, but uh, in its day it was, it was a great Navy, especially St. Petersburg being a waterfront city. So let's, uh, let's turn around here so we can see. This is the, uh, this is the Admir Admiralty building here. And you see the garden spider, and these are Alexander Gardens in front of it. In fact, I'll just go across so you get a slightly better view. There's the main uh, Admir Admiralty building. That says the tour. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have, although I didn't get my bleeding and morning coffee. Uh, it's been nice seeing some of the sights along the Yevsky Prospect. And uh, I'll be back with postcards from St. Petersburg next week, which should be at the Peter and Paul Fortress.